but that's not the truth of the gospel. In fact, the truth of the gospel is grace is not something you have to pursue at all. In fact, long before you ever thought of grace, grace has always been chasing you. And this story of Jonah is about a God who loves you, a God who pursues you, a God who even, again, like we talked about yesterday, in your failures, it doesn't stop him from fighting for your future. Grace is chasing you, and I'm going to show you that in Jonah chapter 2 today. Uh, any of y'all like me and got problems in your life? A couple, couple of you honest people. Okay, I, I got a ton of problems in my life. One, one of these problems I have is I'm very impatient. And uh, I don't know if, 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 for those of you who drive or, or maybe someone picks you up and, and you come home from school, I'm the type of person who when I pull up to my house, I want to make one trip from my truck to the house, okay? So it doesn't matter if I've got like three bags of groceries, I've got a bunch of baseball gloves because my kids play t-ball, I've got stuff from work, I'm, I'm straight parking and I'm grabbing it all at one time, okay? And so where this becomes a problem is if you're trying to grab it all and then on top of that you got your keys, your wallet, your phone, and your sunglasses, right? Some, some of you who drive, you understand, you got to grab all that stuff at one time. And I've done this thing where I try to grab it all and then all of a sudden this Trader Joe's banana starts getting a little wobbly. So I'm losing stuff, there's an apple that's about to fall out. And next thing you know, I, my, my iPhone goes flying because I tried to save a 29 cent banana. Like, that's just not a good thing, right? Uh, and, and the truth is, like, when I make a trip from my truck to the house, I home, only have so much space, so it's kind of dumb if I prioritize a banana that's not really worth that much compared to a phone that's worth hundreds of dollars, right? Just not very smart. But then I think about how we go about life, and sometimes in life, we don't prioritize our life very well and the difference between how I go from my truck to my house when I come home the difference between that and life is with the truck I can make a lot of trips but here, here's the truth I want to tell you something this is really powerful you need to know this is in life you only get one trip so it's really really important that you prioritize your life and that you make space in your life for the things that matter, that the things that have the most worth, you don't treat like they have little worth at all, that you make space for it. And so what I, what I want to challenge us today is to make space for God's grace, because oftentimes God's grace is chasing you, it's chasing you, but so oftentimes we fill our life with all kinds of things that in the end don't really matter. And we haven't actually made space for God and his grace to come in. And so Jonah in chapter 2 today has learned what it looks like to actually make space for God's grace in his life. And you're going to see grace was already chasing him. He just needed to make some room for it. And so he's in the bottom of the whale. You remember at the end of the, the story yesterday, is this, this, this uh, underwater Uber came up, swoops him. He's in the bottom of the ocean in a whale, and he's in a dark place. I don't know if anybody in here would be honest enough to, to admit you've ever been in a dark place in life. I've been in dark places in my life. I've never been in a whale, but I've been in dark places. And uh, you're going to hear today him crying out from a dark place. And I want to tell you today, even if you're in a dark place right now, there was always an invitation to cry out to our God. And God is right there to hear your cry. And so he is crying out. And it says uh, in, in chapter 2, verse 1, it says, From the inside of the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. Prayed to the Lord his God. And he said, In my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered my cry. From, the, from deep in the realm of the dead, I called for help, and you listened to my cry. One of these things that you'll find out, like, over time in your relationship with God, like, if you walk with God, and then you go through a season like Jonah did, where you're like, I don't want to do what God wants me to do, I'm going to run and go do my own thing, you'll experience what the Bible calls the loving discipline of the Lord. And so Jonah has found himself being disciplined by God. Discipline is not, is not a bad thing. Sometimes we think discipline is a bad thing. I have kids I love the heck out of my kids. I don't think anybody can love kids as much as I love my kids. And so therefore, I discipline my kids. 
whenever they're out of line. And it's not because I want to create distance between me and them. No, I want to develop them into who God wants them to be. But sometimes you need to be corrected, right? And so Jonah is in this season of being corrected and things are being taken from him. In fact, now he's lost everything. He's got nothing except for an empty space inside of a whale. But here's the beauty of how God works is when finally you're empty of yourself, there's finally room for more of God. And so now he's got God and he's wide awake to what God might have for him and God meets him right in that place. And so it says, he says in verse three, he says, you hurled me into the depths, into the very heart of the seas and the current swirled about me, the waves and breakers, they swept over me. And I said, I've been banished from your sight, yet I will look again towards your holy temple. And so again, he, he's found out that when the Lord disciplines you, like when God does hard things in your life, it's not to make you distant from him, it's to draw you closer, it's so that he can get your attention. And so now he's like giving God his full attention. And what he finds out is God is right there listening to him, that God is present no matter where he is, no matter where he's been. And so God is present with him and he feels him like never before. And it's crazy because he's in a time where He's just trying to get his bearing straight. Can you just imagine you're underwater in the middle of a well? You can't see nothing, and you're trying to think about your theology and how God works. Meanwhile, you think your life is about to end. And so he's questioning everything about himself. And so he's like, man, the only thing I'm going to do is, uh, uh, he says, God, I think I've been banished from your sight, but I'm going to look to your temple. In other words, I'm going to look to you even though uh, I feel like I'm in a tough spot. So I'm going to look to your temple and it's interesting because he says i've been banished from your sight which actually isn't true because he's the one in the dark who can't see right now you know he's in the well he can't see so he's saying god i've been banished from your sight and really he's got it backwards because god can see him very clearly he's the one who currently because of his situation can't see god and the truth is god is always well aware of what you're going through even when you're in your darkest time, some of you, maybe you've been going through some dark seasons or some dark things, and sometimes you think that because it's dark, God is off sleeping somewhere. The other day, I was sound asleep, sound asleep, and uh, just one of those nights where we finally get some good sleep. I've got a six-month-old, so we haven't been getting a lot of sleep lately, but uh, I was sound asleep, and while I was sound asleep, my five-year-old creeps into the room. He's so quiet. And then he gets right up next to my bed. And he goes, Dad! <laughs> he goes, are you awake? I said, I am now. I am now. And he just like wanted some water or something. Like he came to wake me up because he was in need. And sometimes when life is dark, it's true that if you're here and you have had a human father, human fathers need some sleep. But if you're a child of God and you have a heavenly father, you need to know that your heavenly father never sleeps. That God is always attentive, even in your darkest moments. You might have lost sight of God, but God never loses sight of you. Some of you need to hear that today. That God has not lost sight of your situation. You can cry out to him, even if your life is in a dark time right now. And then it says in verse 5, he says, The engulfing waters, they threaten me. The deep surrounded me. And then he says, seaweed was wrapped around my head. Now, that would just be a terrible situation, wouldn't it? Like, I don't know if you have any irrational fears. Like, you're just going to be walking across campus, and like an asteroid's going to hit you or something, and you just fear walking around campus. That would be an irrational fear. Mine is that, like, seaweed would just get wrapped all around my head. Like, that just would freak me out. And so not only is he in the bottom of the ocean, in the middle of a whale... He's got seaweed wrapped around his head. What a terrible scenario this is for him. And so he says, to the roots of the mountain, I sank down from the earth. You barred me in forever. And so he just pauses for a moment, and he's like, man, that's it for me. I thought I was going to die in the ocean just drowning, and now it just got worse. Now I'm swallowed by a whale. I'm going to rot to death. Like, this is how I feel right now. I'm just straight up going to rot. And not only while I'm rotting, I'm going to be rotting with seaweed around my dome. Like, this is like a terrible situation, right? It just got worse. 
But what I want to encourage you with is there's always two perspectives. You're going through, say you're going through something in life, or next time you do, there's always the human perspective, and then there's heaven's perspective. So he says, man, I'm done forever. I'm done forever. I have no hope. But then it's like all of a sudden he wakes himself up, and he goes, no, 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 I need to, I need to remind myself that those circumstances change all the time. I serve a God who never changes. I serve a God who's with me. I serve a God who, uh, who will never leave me, who promises never to forsake me. And so all of a sudden he starts preaching like truth to himself. Some of you are here today and your mind messes with you sometimes and you need to preach truth at your own mind. You need to remind yourself that your God is too good to let you stay stuck where you're at. And so he, he's preaching truth. And so he starts to do this. He goes, no, 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 wait up. No, no, hold on. Yeah, I'm barred down forever. No, let me preach some truth at myself for a second. And he says this, no, I'm going to declare, Lord, that you have brought my life up from the pit. And I love that he declares that God has rescued him before God has even done it. That he declares that God is a delivering God before he even sees it with his own eyes. And this is really, really important because sometimes, again, you're going to go through a pit in life. You're going to go through a dark season. Maybe you're here and you've got family troubles. You've got issues going on with school or athletics or you've got something going on with a friendship or something in your own health. I want to encourage you that even though your life may be in a pit, God is still worthy of his praise due to him. You can get your praise on because God never changes and his promises never fail. And so he's not going to let you down. And so he's in, the, he's in the middle of the ocean, underwater, stuck in a whale. And I just wonder if he had this moment. And he goes, no, hold up a second. No, no, listen. I may be stuck under, and I may be stuck in this whale, but my lungs are still working. Some of you are here today, and you're going through some stuff, but your lungs are still working. You're still alive. You're still going. And then he goes, maybe, maybe my life hit rock bottom, but guess what? I'm still breathing somehow. And so God must not think it's over for me. I may be underwater, but I'm going to remind myself that my God makes a way where there's no way out. Which, by the way, is the whole story of Jesus. That Jesus got buried underground and wasn't supposed to come out. But how many of you know today that God wasn't going to let it end that way? On the third day, Jesus conquered the grave. And so even though it may look like it ends in destruction, when you serve Jesus... Jesus is a God who overcomes that which is impossible. And so he reminds himself, like, no, nah, it ain't over for me. Like, I'm going to declare God's promises. So can I just, I want to encourage somebody today. Even when your life is in the pit, maybe you're here and you feel like you're just trying to get through it. Can I just encourage you? The best way to pass time, even when your life is full of problems, is to praise God as loud as you can. Get your praise on. Not because you see the miracle you're waiting for. It's because you know God is good on his promises and that his presence is with you right in the middle of it. God's presence is always enough. The question is, are you making room for him to let his grace meet you right where you're at? And so he says, I love this. He says, when, when my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple and if there's one line I want you to remember today, here's the line I want you to get. This is so powerful. He says, those who cling on, like hold on to worthless idols, 29 cent bananas, you forfeit the grace that could be yours. In other words, your hands are so full, your life is so full of things that are worth far less than things that matter for all of eternity you're clinging to all these things you're forfeiting god's grace that just needs space in your life like if you would get rid let go of things that are keeping god from getting into your life you would experience the grace of heaven right in your your own life so he says man how how quick are we to cling to worthless idols and I'll tell you, when I was your age, I had worthless idols. I had a, a girlfriend that was an idol to me. I had a sports team that was an idol to me. I was a valedictorian. My grades were an idol to me. My friendships were idols to me. Listen, none of those things are bad. They're only bad when you put them in God's place. And then all of a sudden, you're not making room for God in your life because you put things that are worth less in his place. You've got no space for the grace of God in your life. 
for God's presence to be moving powerfully in your life. So uh, I, I told you yesterday that I've got a four-year-old, a five-year-old, and a six-month-old. And so I've got two boys on the same t-ball team, and I help coach the team when they need, you know, help. And we're, uh, so they're in their little t-ball team. They're the Giants, by the way. Let's go, Giants. Come on. Come on. So they're the t-ball Giants. We're undefeated. Come on. Let's go. Undefeated this year. Woo. That's what I'm saying. We don't keep score. That, that's how we're undefeated. So it's three innings, okay? So you get to bat, you go to the field, you do that three times. That's how innings work in case you're not familiar with baseball. And so uh, second inning, my boys are out there in the field, and these kids are batting. And some of these kids, dude, I'm like, they're getting them trained up like when they're like four years old trying to get them in the major leagues. I'm telling you, it starts young these days. So these kids are getting ready to bat, and I've got my three-year-old out there who's not, he's turned four later, but he's three at the time. And the dude's about to swing, but he's looking at the dugout, and he's like going like this, like covering his face with his glove, and he's just like bouncing sideways. So I'm thinking, okay, he's not paying attention. I'm like, bro, watch your dome. You're going to get hit with a ball, bro. Like, what are you doing? But he's just like looking at me, and he's like trying to get my attention. So I'm just thinking, of course, he's probably got to use the restroom. So I'm like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out there. I'm trying not to get hit. All right, son, we need to go find a restroom. He goes, no. I'm like, well, what are you doing? Why are you not paying attention? He goes, when is snack time, daddy? I'm like, that's my boy, dude. We think alike right there. It's why we did T-ball, because every week a new parent brings a new snack. It's like the best thing ever. We cannot wait for snack time. And so he's just like, dude, he's like, daddy, I want snack time right now. I'm like, no, you, it's the second inning. We play three innings, not two innings. So I'm like walking him through like, no. So I had to explain to him, like all day after this, we can have snacks. Like we can have snacks all the time, but right now you don't get another turn to, uh, or I'm saying later you won't get another chance to bat. Like you need to have your final at bat now, and then later we can have snacks. But let's not forfeit your time now to be able to bat for a snack you can get later. You guys see where I'm going with this analogy? Because, like, how often do we prioritize things that we can't get back later for things worth less right now? And so I had to explain to him, no bat, and then later we can have snacks. And this is what we do in life. We, we, we put things in God's place when God should be the most important thing in our life right now. We need to make space and to let God in. Sometimes you have to let go of things that are getting in the way. I'm going to tell you a very dumb analogy and so just bear with me. Imagine if you were to run a marathon. Any runners in the house today? Come on, runners. Good for you. I do not like running. More power to you. So imagine you do run, unlike me. Imagine if you're running a marathon, okay? And you run this thing, and you're winning by a mile. Like, you, you just, you, you creamed everybody. That You're up by, like, a mile in front of the next closest person. You're about 10 yards from the ribbon. You're about to finish the race. It's pretty much already won. Like, it's over already. But somebody puts out a little snack table, right? You know, let's just say uh, 10 yards before you get to the finish line and goes, there's a big sign that says, hey, don't want to finish the race? Come over and pick the snack of your choice. I just wondered today what snack would take you down. You know what I'm saying? Like hot Cheetos and Takis, right? I don't know. Don't put those out. I might not make it through. Dorito salsa verde. I mean, I could keep going for days. But I'm saying, how dumb would it be if you went all the way that close to the finish line and then you forfeited it because it was already yours, right? You had it. You were going to win it. It was already given to you pretty much just to finish the line, and you said no. And you, you look at me and you go, well, that's, that's dumb. No one would ever do that. But I'm telling you this. We do this with our life all the time. Because Jesus came for you. He died on a cross for your sin. He rose from the dead to give you new life. He wants to be present with you. And he says, all you have to do is make space for God's grace. You don't have to work for it. All you got to do is open your life up and make room for God in your life. And then you can receive it. It's already yours. Just don't forfeit it by letting other things get in God's place. And how much more important are 
things of eternity than just our temporary life, right? Than a snack compared to finishing a marathon. And the crazy thing in that analogy is if you want to use a marathon analogy, Jesus is actually the one who ran the race with you on his back. And all you got to do is receive the prize. And so how foolish are we sometimes when we only have one trip in life and we don't make space for God? We don't say, hey, the first pri priority in my life is not my relationship with this person. It's not school, actually. It's not my athletics, even though none of those things can be, are bad in themselves, but they're not God, and they're not supposed to be God in your life. God is what you build the whole thing on, and God wants to pursue you with his grace. The question is, have you made space? And so it says in verse 9, he says, but I with shouts of grateful praise will sacrifice to you. And I, I love this. So again, I, I want you to just think about it. He is in a whale. You can't even imagine that for a second. He's in a whale, and he says, I'm just going to sing praise to God. I've made space for him. I'm just going to get my praise on. And I want to encourage you again, next time you're in a scenario where life has got you down, I would ask you to consider worshiping so loud that the whale don't want to hold you down anymore. Like, sometimes you feel like the enemy is holding you down. Worship a little louder. Worship a little louder so he don't want to hold you down anymore. That he'll want to break you out of the position he's trying to hold you down in. And so he's just like, I'm getting my praise on. Uh, anybody in the house like hype music? Like you just like, you got to get hype. You're driving to school. You got a song you put on. You, you're getting pumped for the game. So you got your headphones in. Come on, anybody like hype music? Come on, you got to have some hype music. So me and my boys, we have hype music for T-ball, okay? We, we got to get pumped. So I'm like, my boys said, hey, let's put on some hype music because our T-ball game's coming up. I said, okay, Drake, let's put on some Drake. Oh, wait, no, you're four. No, let's not do that. That's a bad idea. I don't know why I thought of that. Okay, better idea, um, Lego Movie has this, this soundtrack called Everything is Awesome. They got this song, <laughs> everything is awesome, everything is cool when you're part of a team, everything is awesome when you live in the dream, right? Come on, you guys, that's hype music right there. That song, hey, that song is ridiculous, man. Clocks, rocks, socks, they're awesome, right? Everything is awesome. Lost my job, it's an opportunity. Got more time from an awesome community. Let's go. That's what we're doing all day today. We got time for our community. <laughs> so you're, you're hyping, everything is awesome. And then they go and play t-ball bad. So how do you explain that, right? Like, not... Uh, because you guys know that everything isn't always awesome, right? So I want to believe that everything is awesome, but not everything is always awesome. But what you can do is step back and go, man, listen, life ain't always awesome. Sometimes in life, things with my parents don't go the way I want them to. Things in my health or at school don't go the way I want them to. Everything ain't always awesome. But what you learn as you grow in your faith is sometimes you can find a little bit of awesome in everything if God is with you. And if your God is awesome, then you know that if he's with you and he's awesome, in the end, everything's going to be okay. And so he's just getting hype in the middle of this whale. And it says, I'll just close with this verse. It says, and the Lord commanded the fish and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. And so he'd never been so pleased in his whole life to be barf. You know what I'm saying? And barf gets him out of the whale's mouth. So I want to just encourage you, because sometimes you think that your circumstances are being controlled by the enemy, but it says that God commanded the fish, and the fish spewed him out. Don't ever give the enemy too much credit. If you're going through some stuff, at the, just the simplest speaking of God's voice he can cast you out of whatever you're going through. But maybe you're going through a season where you need to learn to let go of some things so you can make room for God. I want to encourage you today. Grace, remember, is not something you have to pursue. All you got to do is make room. Grace has always been pursuing you right where you're at. And so what are the things that you might need to let go of so that you can let God in? What are those things? 
so that you can experience a God who, though everything isn't always awesome, if God is with you in the end, everything will be okay. Let me, uh, let me pray for you guys, and then we're going to have an awesome day serving our awesome community, right? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for every student here. I thank you that you are, you're with us. I thank you that even when times are dark, Lord, even when we feel like we've lost sight of you, you've never lost sight of us. I pray that we'd have the humility to just call upon your name today, that you would enter into our space, that we would let go of things that are keeping you from being the, the center of our life. And so we give you today, Lord, do amazing things, do awesome things, we pray in Jesus' powerful name. Amen, amen. <laughs>